This is a tutorial of medical embryology presented by the SHLTV with reference to Langman Medical Embryology by T.W. Settler. Hello, in this tutorial we are going to see the embryology of the urogenital system. So the embryology of the urogenital system is going to comprise of the first part which is the urinary system and then the lateral part is going to be the genital system. But this system is combined just because they have they have um, associative factors or they have conjoint they are really related. So now in this diagram you can visualize first this one. Yeah, we know here that at this position when this mesoderm is going to be formed at the, by the second by the third week of the treatment by the third week of. Um, of the gestation, we realize that here you are going to have a paroxysmal mesoderm. Paroxysmal mesoderm are going to the mesoderm is going to divide into three parts: the paroxysmal mesoderm closer to the neural tube. Then we have the intermediate mesoderm, and here we have the somatic and the visceral mesoderm. All the two are the lateral mesoderms. So this year, at the level of the paroxysmal mesoderm, we have they are going to be the formation of the somites. Now, these blood vessels here in the dorsal outer at the level of the intermediate mesoderm. The intermediate mesoderm are going to form the nephrotome. The intermediate mesoderm are going to form the tissues which are going to be involved in the production of the renal, the renal cells. So these are the nephrotomes here. So the nephrotomes are going to be in by are going to be um, accepted, are going to accept in the different blood vessels. Of the dorsal outer, so you see here that you have the internal glomerulus. Internal glomerulus enter into it as such. So here is the internal glomerulus, and here is the external glomerulus. Here are the nephric tubules, which are also formed at the other portion of the nephrotome. So now the main thing to note on this two diagram are going to be the original renal tissue. You need to know that. Originally, the renal tissue is produced like in case of the fish. If you look in the fish, you are going to realize that the kidneys of the fish expand throughout the length of the body. It expands throughout the thorax and the abdomen. So from there, you see that our initial, our 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 primate form, as in the law of Darwin, our primate form was as a result of fishes. So now, in the development of the fish, we realize that we also have this um, this renal tissues also in human beings. So these renal tissues are also found in human beings. And here, at this um, proximal portion, here we are going to have the segment or the cranial portion. We are going to have the segmented intermediate mesoderm. The segmented intermediate mesoderm are going to produce the 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 proximal part or the cranial part of the nephron the nephral tissues here is going to be called the pronephric system the kidney tissue the renal tissue produced here are going to be the pronephric tissue pronephric system and their associated tube is going to be called the pronephric tubule the pronephric tubule is going to carry the initial urine from the pronephric system out into the um, into this portion here. <clears throat> now, the next one we have here the unsegmented intermediate mesoderm. The unsegmented intermediate mesoderm is this other portion here. So, this is the tissue of unsegmented intermediate mesoderm, and here the intermediate mesoderm, which is going to be involved with the renal tissue, are going to be called the mesonephric system. At this position, you have pronephric pro 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 system, here you have the mesonephric system, and lastly, here the tissues here are going to be called the, uns they are, the uns are the unsegmented mesoderm, and they are going to be called the metanephric system. Each of them have their tubule particularly. Here you are going to have the pronephric tubule, here you are going to have a mesonephric tubule, and here you are going to have a metanephric tubule or the ureteric board. So this is what's going to directly produce the ureter. 
so that's why you have the ready book all of them are going to combine at this position here so they will buy at this position all the tubos are going to buy at this position and they're going to buy with the inferior portion of the allantois this inferior portion of the allantois is called the euro genital sinus because here at this position and in and posterior to your genital sinus you have the terminal portion of the digestive system so all of them are going to enter into the cracker like in case of the fish but when you are going to see the letter development you are going you are going to see that the your genital sinus are going to divide into different portions now so this is going to be the A diagram. The A diagram is going to be the first, what is going to happen first. Later on, you are going to see that the vestigial pronific system are slightly going to degenerate. So we have the pronific system, we have the mesonephric uh, SUG unit. Slightly, they are degenerating day by day. And here we have the metanephric system with the uretic tubule with this um, line in red, in, in yellow. So now, in this diagram, we can visualize very well the, the gonad ridge, the gonadal ridge, and the mesonephric with the paramesonephric ridge. Here is a paramesonephric dog, and here is a mesonephric dog, and here is a paramesonephric dog. You see that the mesonephric dog is going to have the mesonephric ridge. The paramesonephric dog is going to have the paramesonephric ridge. All the paramesonephric dogs are carrying, uh, normally, normally we're carrying urine from the paramesonephric system. Now, we, we have all the pa, but the the the, pa, the paramesonephric dog are still carrying, um, as we're still we're mostly carrying a. Uh, uh, um, kidney from the pronephric system so the mesonephric dog is mainly carrying from the from the mesonephric system and the paramesonephric dog have bound with the pronephric um, dog system to uh, the, to form the, the the part of the mesonephric dog has bound to the promesonephric system to form the paramesonephric dog and this is what is going to take mostly the urine which was found at the level of the pro nephron so here you are going to have extruity tubules of mesonephros so these are the extruity tubules so you have the urogenital mesentries here here you are going to have the gonadal ridge here is a ridge for the mesonephric tubules here is a ridge of the mesonephric dog and here is a ridge of the paramesonephric dog <coughs> So now, as the blood comes from the mesentery, they are going to cause the renal tissue in the mesonephric dog to then produce these renal tubules and all that. So this is the mesentery of the gut, and this is the mesentery of the gonads here. <coughs> so now, these are the meson. This is the mesonephros at this position here. Here is a paramesonephric dog coming mostly from a, a combination of the pronephros um, dog and the um, but the mesonephric dog. So we have the paramesonephric dock here. We have the mesonephric dock here coming. All of them are entering now. Um, the paramesonephric dock and the mesonephric dock, all of them are going to enter at the level of the urogenital sinus. Here is the upper portion of the urogenital sinus called the allantois, and here is the posterior portion called the cracker. So we have all this in here. <coughs> and here are going to be the, gon the gonads which are lying on the gonadal ridge. <coughs> Now, on the urinary system, realize that here is going to be the allantois. Here we said that it's going to be the here is a urogenital sinus. Here, here is the portion which separating the separating the um, urogenital sinus and the rectum. So it's going to be the urorectal septum. It's separated two. So you're going to have a urorectal septum here. Here you're going to have a cracker. Here you're going to have the ureteric bud. Here you are going to have the metanephric blastema. The metanephric blastema are only the tissues involved with the metanephros. Here you are going to have the mesonephric dog and here is the mesonephric tissue. So now, how does the kidney grow, grow grossly? So gross, in the gross aspect, you see that the ureteric bud is going to produce the two pervis. As it is entering into the mesonephric blastema, as it enters because it's a mesonephric blastema, as entering into the mesonephric blastema, the more it is um, induced, the mesonephric blastema induces the pelvis to um, produce more calyxes. 
So we are going to see that it's going to produce the major calyx, the different major calyx here. And the mesognephi basima is going to induce it again to produce the different minor calyxes. And after the production of the minor calyxes, you are going to have the production of the collecting dog still by the um, by the, to the the initial tissue coming from the ureteric bud. Now this this diagram was showing how the um, the the ureteric bulb grows into the uh, mesonephric blastema. Now, the other diagram here is going to show you how the blood vessels you see again inside. Here was a gross um, a gross diagram to show you how the ureteric bulb is going to draw is going to grow inside the ureteric uh, in, inside the mesonephric metanephric blastema. Now, microscopically what is going to occur we are going to see in this diagram so when the collected tubes tubules have arrived at this location microscopically you see that they're going to be in contact with the metanephric tissue cap here as they are going to be in contact of metanephric now it is no more the metanephric tubules which are going to induce the collecting dog it is instead the um, collecting dog which are going to induce now the metanephric the metanephric tissue cap in order to differentiate it to produce clusters so the metanephric tissue cap are going to differentiate now to produce clusters so after the production of clusters the renal vesicles are going to be produced after the renal vesicle produced, you see that at one portion they are going to be the Bowman capsule produced, and here you are going to have the terminal portion of the nephron. After that, the Bowman capsule is going to have we have going to have Bowman per capsule here. You are going to have your proximal convoluted tubule, your loop of inland distal convoluted tubule, and the more it grows, you see that the meso <coughs> The mesonephric, the metanephric and tissues are going to have the proximal convoluted tubules, the um, loop of inlay, and then the distal convoluted tubules binding down to the collecting duct here. The collecting duct arises from another tissue from the ureteric bulb. This one arises from the meso metanephric and blastema, and this one arises from the mesenchyme. So you have the glomerulus here, which is going to cause, and we've seen already how the um, blood is capable of inducing this one. So now after that, we are going to have a turn. So we are going to have proximal convoluted tubule, the uh, ascending and descending limb. So this is proximal convoluted tubule. You have the descending limb, you have the ascending limb, and you have distal convoluted tubule connected with the collecting duct. <clears throat> so now, what? How does the um, collecting duct now induce the um, metanephric blastema in order for it to produce the different renal vesicles? So this is how they are going to be performed. The BMP7 and the FGF2 factor are going to be the one which are going to cause the um, w, WT1 gene to be activated. So you see that you have the BMP7 and the FGF factor which are going to cause the WT1 to be activated. And all at this activation of WT1 is going to cause the formation now of these renal vesicles here. Here we see that there is inside the WNT9B and WNT6. So here is the PAX2 WNT4, which are going to cause all of them are going to cause the TD production of PAX2 WNT, which is going to induce the formation of renal vesicles still in this way. So this is all the renal pathology with two ureter, but this is not of our concern now. Now, the next portion is the ascent of the kidney. So, normally the kidney, the metanephric um, tissue are going to be found at the level of the, uh, to be found at the level of the rectum. You see that the rectum is this at this location and the metanephric um, tissue are at this location close to the rectum. So, normally their position will be at the sacral part of the body. But now, what happens is that the more the um, lumbar vertebrae are growing up, the more, since this is connected directly to a posterior abdominal wall, the kidney is directly connected to posterior abdominal wall, is going to ascend with the um, with the vertebral column as it grows. So you are see, and since the mesonephros is not directly connected with the um, posterior abdominal wall, it's instead going to descend. So you have a contra a a a, a contrary um, movement. So the mes metanephric tissues are going to ascend as such here, while the mesonephric and the gonads are going to descend. 
so because they are not directly connected they are not so connected to the posture abdominal wall here you are going to have the bladder the mesonephros the gonads the metanephric tissue trying to ascend here while the gonad and the mesonephric tissue are going to try to descend <coughs> So here are some clinical correlations. In this case, you have a pelvic kidney where which has not ascended, and in this case, you have a hot horseshoe kidney with this lower terminal here. Realize that this horseshoe kidney has ascended, but the inferior mesenteric artery is blocking it from its further ascending up. <coughs> so now, in this position, you are going to see now the um, the division of the urogenital sinus. So how does the urogenital sinus divide? So here at this level first, you have the primitive urogenital sinus. So this is the primitive urogenital sinus here, which was contained the mesonephric duct and the ureteric duct, duct, both binding to each other. But afterward, the um, this urorectal sinus is going to come and invaginate much more, trying to separate the urogenital sinus from the posterior part, which is the hindgut. So they are going to try to separate and at the end you have the separation and also we see here that you have the mesonephric duct is going to be separated from the ureter and you are going to have this end here with the formation of the bladder and, and at this lower portion here the mesonephric duct is going to enter and here you are going to have the ureter. This is in a male, uh, a, a male fetus. So you are going to have here at this position the prostate gland is going to be formed. So as you are going to see in the letter views. So now here you are going to have the urinary bladder. Here you are going to have the ureter, and as you see here, you see this in male because you are going to have the mesonephric tubules. The, the the mesonephric tubules are going to produce the seminal vesicle at this upper portion here. Here is the pelvic part of the urogenital sinus. At this position here, you are going to have the production of the prostate gland. So the prostate gland is going to be produced here, and this is going to be the definitive urogenital sinus. Here is going to be the anorectal canal. At this position, you see that the, the derivative of the, the, the anant is going to degenerate and it's going to form a small structure called the urachus above the bladder. Here is going to be a prostate gland. Here is going to be a penile ureter inside the penis. You are going to have the seminal vesicles. The ductus difference is going to be the, the, the letter part, letter, letter um, formation of. Uh, of the mesonephric dog and you have the seminal vesicle here the seminal vesicle and the membranous ureter so all these are what you can find at this location and lastly the bubble ureter gland is going to be a um the a derivative the bubble ureter gland is going to be the derivative or the cowper gland is going to be derivative of the um of the meta of the paramesonephric duct instead so we have the mesonephric duct <coughs> at this portion here we have the mesonephric duct mesonephric duct you see how it's going to separate so we have the mesonephric duct and the ureteric but all of them are going to be originally having the same same point of of of, of binding but after afterward we realize that each of them are trying to separate from each other as it grows so as it grows much more you see that this one is going to go downward and this one is going to go more upward so the ureter is going to move upward and this one is going to go downward so posterior to bladder you have a representative structure that representative structure posterior to bladder which is going to con which is going to show the insertion point of the ureter and the insertion point of the um, of the ductus difference so that position which is going to show the insertion point of ureter and the insertion point of the ejaculated drug duct inside the um, the bladder and inside inside the, the prostate gland here and the bladder up here you are going to have the trigone so this representative structure is going to mark the posterior entrance of the of the ureter and the posterior entrance also of the ejaculatory duct or the vas deferens inside the prostate. You are going to have here your trigone of the bladder. 
So these are some clinical relevance. Yeah, in this case, you realize that yeah, you don't have um, a, a formation of the urachus. You see that the allantois is still in contact. It does not degenerate in this case. So the urine can come out here and is going to so come out from the anterior abdominal wall. Here you have a urachal cyst where the tissues of the allantois are still producing um, fluid in which is which is going to have a urachal cyst and here you can have a urachal sinus where the cysts are producing fluid and they are open up to the anterior abdominal wall so from there we have visualized all the main tissues involved in the urinary system and this will mark the end of the urinary embryology thanks for your kind attention